Hey guys, Chris here from the MacMob.com. Today I'm going to walk you through this uh, three-part tutorial on how to set up an iTunes home server. And this will actually be part one. Uh, part one is going to consist of setting up the iTunes server and setting up home sharing. Uh, literally just getting your, your uh, iTunes server up and going and being able to listen to your music and stream your media uh, and your, on your local network. Part two, I'm going to show you how to access your iTunes server from basically anywhere in the world. Uh, outside of your home network, you'll be able to uh, get all of your media streamed to your iPhone, iPad, iPod, uh, your Mac, whatever. And then part three, I just wanted to show you how to utilize some of the tools available to basically turn your iTunes server into a home entertainment superstar. And we'll, we'll be showing you some of the remote access uh, tools, some of the iPad, iPod tools, stuff like that. So the first uh, session here, like I said, I'm going to show you just how to get this iTunes server uh, up and up and going and uh, your home sharing set up. And basically, just for you guys to know, I'm just running this uh, server on my, my Mac that I use pretty much every day. I do have a few other Macs laying around, but I just found it doesn't really utilize a lot of resources. Um, and my Mac is always on, so uh, it's usually doing something. Um, I do, however, house my my iTunes media on an external drive via FireWire 800, and uh, that's just to keep my local drive, um, you know, free. I, I've got I've got a lot of media, uh, gigabytes and gigabytes of media, but also just because it's somewhere else, not on my local drive. If I decide to uh, take take my drive somewhere else or do something else with it, it's all there, and it is being backed up too. Um, so let's hop into this. Basically, what you're going to want to do is just have an, a, a fairly up-to-date Mac. Um, Intel machine would be the best here. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have installed the latest version of iTunes, which at this point, I've got iTunes 10.4.1. And uh, that's the latest uh, today. So you'll see here, I'm running 64-bit iTunes 10. So you're going to want to definitely make sure that you have that available. Another thing that's pretty important here is uh, you're going to want an always-on internet connection. Uh, that means no dial-up, um, just because you know your 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 connection. You're going to want always on, uh, and this is going to be more important for outside of the house uh, rather than local network. And the next thing you're going to definitely want is a wire or wired or wireless network. Uh, it doesn't matter what you'd have. It, it's definitely going to make your life easier for your uh, iPod and iPad streaming if you have a wireless network. Uh, if you don't, this will still work for, uh, you know, if, you, if you're streaming to other Macs, your Apple TV, etc. And then uh, last, you're just going to need an iTunes library. Uh, I mean, like I stated before, I ha have mine housed on an external drive, which seems to be working pretty well. Uh, and if you don't know how to do that, you can just walk through it really quick. It's um, if you head over to Preferences and go to your Advanced tab, you can actually set your iTunes media folder location to be somewhere else. And I did that. I have it, like I said, housed on an a external uh, Lacey drive um, that is one terabyte and it can just hold all my media. That's basically all that drive does. All right, so let's get, uh, let's get into this a little bit more. Um, now, the first step we're going to want to do is, uh, like, like I said, just make sure that you can handle the latest iTunes um, and transfer your uh, music over to the, uh, the machine that you're going to want to use as a server, uh, whether that's local or via an external drive. Uh, anyway, you're, you're going to want to get the music over to it. And once, once you actually have iTunes set up and, and your machine's up to date, um, and your library is ready to go, we're just going to need to make a few changes. So first thing you're going to want to do is pop into system preferences right here. And we're going to want to go to our energy saver. And what we're going to want to do here is put our computer to sleep option, put that over to never. If we put our computer to sleep, chances are it's not going to wake up when we want to uh, stream our music or, or uh, you know, it's our, or what's going to happen is our iPad or our iPod's not going to see the library as uh, accessible. And uh, we're, we could put our dis display to sleep, especially if you just have a machine that's sitting in the corner or something. If you have a display on it, you could just set it to sleep for one minute and uh, you'll save some power that way, but also 
your display doesn't even need to be on. Um, I uh, definitely would encourage this. Put the hard disk to sleep when possible. I mean, that your discs don't need to be constantly spinning, uh, especially if they're not even being used. This isn't going to have any effect on to whether you can access your library or not. This is just going to mean uh, that your, your disks aren't constantly spinning. Um, you'll still be able to see your library through uh, your other sources. And once you do start using your library, obviously your disks will start spinning. Uh, Wake for network access is a pretty good one too. Um, you know, if, you're, if your machine is asleep and your, your display is off or whatever, and it, if, you, uh, if, you, if you ping your, your, your machine, your server, uh, it'll wake it up basically. Um, and I've got these other two. These are basically preferences, but start up automatically after a power failure power failure and restart automatically if the computer freezes. I just did that uh, because if you do have this guy sitting in a closet or something somewhere, that's less management that you actually have to do. Uh, your machine is simply just going to restart uh, when it needs to. And uh, it'll, again, always be on. So if you're on a trip or something, this is really cool. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. So make sure your settings are pretty much mimicking this, this guy here. And uh, we can close out of that. Um, I always think it's a good idea to have your iTunes open at login. Uh, and this goes back to the one point I just made about, uh, about you know, if you are on vacation or somewhere out of the house uh, and your machine does need to start, it's going to uh, start iTunes. So real simple way to do that is just to right click on your iTunes um, icon in the dock, go to options, and make sure that you have a check mark next to open at login. And that's, uh, that'll simply uh, open it up every time your machine logs up or logs in. Um, so one thing we're going to want to do next is to get our, our iTunes preferences set up. And you'll just want to head over to iTunes here, go to preferences, and we're going to want to go to store. Basically what we're going to do is set, set automatic downloads of your music, your apps, and your books. So anytime that you have or you download anything uh, from any machine, it's automatically going to download it to this server. That way you're always up to date as far as uh, the content that you have collected uh, through your devices or other machines on your server. Um, and then you can always check for available downloads as well. That'll just go out and, and check. Um, and then it'll download it automatically. Uh, the automatically pre download pre-orders when available, that's up to you. It's if you have the uh, iTunes Pass or if you're, if I think if you're subscribed to TV shows or something like that, uh, you may be able to get some of that. I'm not 100% familiar with that and I don't use it. And I guess hence that's why I don't have uh, it checked. But uh, so those are some of the basic settings. I think after we can figure the store settings, we'll hop on over to the general tab. And here, we're basically just want to, we will want to set this when you insert a CD. This is a cool feature to this. So basically, if you put a CD into your server, you're, you can set it to say import CD and inject. So what's going to happen is it's going to import the, uh, the music off of your CD, put it into your library, and when it's done, it's going to inject the disk. Uh, so... So really you have no, no user interaction to that. And again, if you're running a headless system or something, something that uh, you don't have a display on, you just pop in a CD, it imports it, and it'll go out to GraceNote, and it'll get the track info um, and the album artwork, and you're set. You can also uh, configure it a little bit more as far as the import settings. I use AAC encoder. I just do that because I have plenty of room on my uh, drive, and, and I like the quality that it gives me. Um, but this is obviously a preference for you, and if you don't know what these are, you can search them. Uh, definitely, there's a lot of info on these encodes out there. And we'll want to go just check mark this automatically retrieve CD tracks from the internet. And again, that's just going to go out to Grace Note and get all of your uh, all of your info. And you could also check automatically download missing album artwork, and it'll go out and download the album artwork. Um, and then click OK. So next we're going to want to, we've got the basic settings set up. And obviously there's some things in there you can go and hink around in and uh, set up to your own preferences. But those are the ones that we definitely need uh, for this to work uh, and, and the way that we're going to be exploring it. 
We're going to want to set up home sharing at this point. So you're going to want to go up to your advanced tab. And I've got my home sharing turned on, but I'll turn it off just to show you here. So we'll go to advanced, turn home sharing on. So basically you're going to, you're going to want to enter in your Apple ID and you're going to do this on any machine that you plan to use with this server. Uh, but this, this is going to act as a server and we're going to go ahead and uh, put in our credentials. Again, this is your Apple ID credentials. This is the what you probably would use to uh, buy uh, apps or iTunes uh, music or whatever. Um, so go ahead and enter in those credentials. And when you do, go ahead and click on Create Home Share. And home sharing is now on and my email address is uh, on and set up. So we can click done. Um, that's basically all you have to do there. Um, so so now your home sharing is on and when you go to another machine you'll be able to see that in fact you're you're gonna have um, you're gonna have a list over here a, a library over here of your shared uh, your shared server which you can go into and play all of your media if you're on another machine. Uh, since this is the server it doesn't necessarily show that. Okay. So our next thing we want to do is we we pretty much have our server set up and we have our uh, energy saving preferences set. Um, now we could basically just go over to an iPad or an iPod uh, and set up the home uh, sharing preferences on that. And this is how you do that. So basically if you're using an iPad, you'll just want to go in and set up your home sharing on your iPad so that you can access all your stuff via your server. First, just go into settings and head on down to your iPod settings and you'll see the home sharing um, where, where you're just going to enter in again your Apple ID and your password just go ahead and do that and uh, once you enter in that info just hit your home button to back on out of it and go into your iPod and it's what's going to happen is it's going to have to sync up your library and it may take just a little while um, it's going to be set to your iPad, so you're just going to be able to see the music on your iPad or the, the media on your iPad. But if you click on library here, you'll be able to go into your shared library that's on your server. And again, that may take a little while to, uh, to kind of refresh and for your iPod or your iPad to see that. Um, so oops. let's get it here. And so there it sees all the artists, all the music on my uh, server here. And at that point, you could go in and play your music. Uh, again, with your, with your uh, album artwork and info available. And it's basically the same thing on, put this over here, basically the same thing on your iPhone. Uh, you'll want to go into your settings and head over to your iPod and put your Apple your Apple ID info into here and go out and go into your iPod and again you can head over to more oh actually hold on a minute I'm go over to more and head to shared and you'll be able to see your library there and it may just take a second to kind of refresh it and get all the information from your server and when you do again you'll be able to have the same features on the bottom here artists songs videos uh, and more and again you can play uh, your music you can watch your videos um, depending on how many videos you have loaded up it may take a little while for it to actually actually recognize your videos uh, but it works the same uh, and then it's obviously on the iPod it works the same as well and then uh, on any other Mac that you're using you just go to iTunes and uh, go ahead and open up your uh, sharing so those are some pretty basic steps. I mean, once you have your iPad and your iPod set up, um, if you have an iPhone, you can do that as well. Uh, another Mac, 
on your network. You can also uh, stream your uh, media to that. Your Apple TV, basically the same way. There's a, uh, a, a setting in there that you just enter in your Apple ID and it'll go out and find your shared library. Uh, and then you could obviously just stream your movies and everything to your Apple TV. Uh, the media, the, the music is fun because you can plug it into your stereo and, and pretty much jam out. Um, so that was part one. Again, part one was just the basic setup of uh, home sharing and making sure that uh, you had a Mac that could support this. Uh, stay tuned for part two where I'm going to show you how to access all of this outside of the network, which is going to get pretty interesting. Uh, that's when you can start doing some cool things uh, as far as uh, just being able to share your media across the uh, across many machines or you know even if you have friends that you want to share media with stuff like that um, and then I'm going to show you in part three how to utilize some tools uh, the remote tool a few other tools that are going to help you to uh, turn your server into a pretty much a full-fledged home entertainment system um, so again thanks a lot I hope you enjoyed the tutorial stay tuned and follow us on Twitter at the Mac mob and uh, be sure to uh, check out this video on the macmob.com we're gonna, we actually will have a a full uh, article uh, text based where you can follow along with this video uh, thanks for watching and have a good day goodbye